Hello and welcome to another NAJ video. Here I have an AJ3 Max, but today I'll review the AJ4 Max with E80 laser model. Box of AJ4 is a bit smaller from previous versions. Its size is 103 by 26 by 19 cm. And as usual, AJ packed and protect everything very well with a cutted sponge, but this time in two layers. Now let's check what we got into box. Here we have fully assembled X-axis with motherboard, stepper motors, cables and so on. Two Y-axis rails, front and rear frame part, power supply, laser model in my case E80, protective goggles and three bags of accessories. Nature 4 Max is their first model which work on 24 volts, so there come 24 volts 5 amp power supply with machine. In first bag we have strong but flexible quality USB cable, manual and quality check paper. In the second bag is a screwdriver, grease, 2 meter air assist tube with coupling 4 to 8 mm, belt, 2 piece of belt tensioners, zip ties and 5 hex keys. And in the last bag we find drawing adapter with two pen inserts and testing pieces like cardboard, wood, plywood and two anodized aluminium plates. In the model box we find vacuum sealed laser model with modern manual, air assist tube with screws and coupling and air assist nozzle. Previous versions had 15 by 50 mm extruder profile in front and back of the frame, but Neji 4 has 5 mm aluminium L profile with pre-attached rubber legs and finally an engraved NJ logo on front leg. I was impressed here by how this part is machined. We can see that they changed its color of anodizing from black to green. This part was CNC machined, and if you look closer we'll notice that every single edge of every smallest hole got cut chamfer. It also has many trees by lanes, so we can screw on L profiles as a base instead of honeycomb panel. Side rails look same as on older models, but there is engraved warning. When we look closer we can see that the rail surface where the rail is running is grinded, and it's grinded so sharp that you can easily cut fingers by the edges. And when I compare it in AG3 I notice that profiles is also stronger. Older model has 15 by 30 mm profile while Neji 4 got 20 by 30 mm. On pre-assembled X-axis I quickly noticed two big differences. One is linear rail and the other is third axis. Also here is everything made out of analyzed aluminium. We can see that the X-axis motor is now fixed on right side while on left side is a belt tensioner. A belt loop is stitched on a carriage. X-axis is same dimension, but working area by X-axis on AJ4 is a bit smaller, due to motor holder and belt tensioner attached from back side of the rail. As you may notice, there's one thing missing on AJ4. Yep, there's no cable chains, but just wrapped cables hanging on support, just like the AJ2 Max had. Manuals show that we need to screw the supporting plastic on, but in my case was already screwed, so it bent into box and keep the bended shape. Before I start assembling I just screw the support off, unwrap the cable hose and turn support for 180 degree, so it nicely holds cables lifted. I couldn't resist to not disassemble some parts to check for details. And when I got all the cables disconnected I firstly removed the motherboard, which looked great, quality solders and connectors. There are some more connectors, like additional power supply for laser model, Z-axis motor and limit switch, separate A-axis connector for fourth axis, so we don't need to unplug the Y-axis and another C1 connector which is just extend for C1 button, so we can pl plug any button here and use it same as button on motherboard, which can be hard to reach if you had enclosure. There's artery 32-bit microcontroller, X and Y limit switch and so on. Great feature of that board is that it works on 24 or 12 volts without make any change. There's no more plastic washer between boards, but it's mounted with the brass screws, so everything is grounded perfectly. Even the motherboard protection is made out of aluminium with engraved connector labels, which also work as a heat sink since there are heat transfer foam on each side of the board. Belt tensioner is good and very easy to set up. Firstly loosen the side screw and then set tension with long screw which is above the motherboard. When the belt is tight enough, tie the back the side screw. 
X character Z axis is assembled with quite a lot of parts, but everything is so simple to disassemble in case of cleaning, greasing or repair. Also here I didn't find any plastic except the end of knobs for fixing the laser model so it won't scratch the model housing. But I find a part anodized with a natural color, it's belt clamp. Rear part is connected from belt to a carriage and on front is aluminium base with linear rail and ball rail carriage. These carriages are quite delicate so don't disassemble them if there's no need, but if you be very careful so you don't lose the tiny balls. Below is a part with very quick lead screw. On top is a tiny stepper motor with integrated lead screw. Under the motor is a PCB with connector and Z-axis home button and a brass nut screwed into block between linear carriage and model clamp. Fully assembled X carriage can be removed with only a screw a few screws if there's need to grease or check the linear carriage. Entire X axis is nicely made, it's very rigid, wheels got screws for precisely set the clearance and every stepper motor except the small Z1 have rubber rings between motor and plate so less vibration transfer and frame which means the machine is more quiet. E80 model is real beast next to A4640. It weighed almost 600 gram, while A4640 version 2 has only 232 gram. I like that they added two types of air assist to the model. First one is just a steel tube with laser welded holder this time, so it's solid holder position. And also a piece of tube with coupling is glued on a tube which eliminates the air leakage. The other one is air assist nozzle. If you attach that one, we need to unscrew the protective nozzle and the side screw on the model and mount in the 90 degree coupling. With that nozzle we need to use compressor without water or oil. On this nozzle is also additional ring which can be set so the laser light is high and also air assist is more effective. I didn't plan to disassemble the model, but the curiosity was stronger than the warranty sticker and glue screw heads, so I did it. There are two temperature controlled fans, size 50 by 12 mm, which isn't as loud as the small ones, maybe also because of rubber rings which is mounted under every screw of the fan, so they prevent vibration transfer. Then we have super precisely CNC machined anodized housing and cover with lot of screws, which make a good joint between components for better heat transfer. They also have spring washer, so they stay tangent in any temperature. Inside we can find a laser driver and a core, which is really huge. Only the core is heavier than entire A4640 laser model. The core is glued together, so I didn't open it, but I found a photo so you can see what it's looked like from the inside. There are four diodes with the prisms and some lenses combined into one stronger laser beam. Assembling of NEGI 4 Max is really simple and quick job, so let's do it. Firstly remove all 8 screws from Y axis profiles and then screw rear L profile and two Y axis profiles but use only a lower screw. Before tightening make sure that the profile nicely seated into slot. Then slide on assembled X axis from front side, but in my case I couldn't because wheel tightness wasn't preset, so I need to loosen the wheels by simply untie the sides and lower screw. When the X axis is on the rails, screw on the front L profile and set the wheel clearance, but don't over tie them. I set them just that much that the wheels get some grip and try to turn them with a the hand. When all the wheels are set and running nice, tight all the screws and check for squareness of the frame. Now install the belts. There are only one piece of belt which need to be cut, but if we check how long it need to be before we cut in half we got three pieces of belt. If you install boot screws like I do, remove the upper one and install the belt through the groove. Now I can just fix the belt with the same screw or install the belt tensioner. Details about mounting the belt tensioner you can see in my video about NG3 add-ons. Make sure the belt tensioners are fully released. Then install the belt under the wheels and over the motor pulley to backside and fix the belt with a screw. Okay. 
Repeat that on other side and then tension the belts, but not over tie them and try to tie both belts the same. The machine is now assembled and at that point we can see how rigid the frame is. But still notice one issue. When the left side was all the way back on the limit switch, right side moved a bit forward when pressure was released. That means the X and Y wasn't perpendicular and I need to align it every time I start the machine. But the solution was quite simple. All I need to do is to tighten the side screw which holds the X axis profile. At that point I notice also other screws isn't fully tightened, so my advice is go through the screws and tighten them, especially on wheels, so you may save some problems in the future. Before I try the machine I want to install honeycomb panel I got from AG3 Max. It fit nicely by width, but it's just a few millimeter too long or even too short to fit between or on front and rear leg. With some improvising I solved the issue on simplest possible way, I just put some wood plates under the panel so it go over the profiles. So far there's no honeycomb panel for an AG4, but we can buy L profiles which screw on front and rear legs and make the frame even more rigid. Now plug the power supply and USB cable to a PC, then go to an AG Wiki and select an AG4. There you can find all the detailed information about the machine, scroll down to software section and download the driver and software. Install the driver and run the app. If you try to run an older app it will offer you and downloaded the latest version. When we run the software, select the port and connect. On first run it will offer you to update the software, which is done with just a few clicks. App is quite the same, but here is some new button, task options, where we select number of passes and manage the z-axis position. If we turn on the Bluetooth on PC and run the NAJ app, we can simply connect without USB cable. To connect Lightburn via Bluetooth, we need to virtual com port software. In the AJ app, click on Connect Lightburn via Bluetooth and follow the manual. Everything is so simple. As I said, the AJ app looks quite the same, simply and functional, with photo gallery, online DXF files and so on. But they had another function I really missed. We can now zoom image on set size window and positioning window, that's really useful. But there's another new button for download code into machine. Yep, we got back online function. When set up everything, instead of start button, click download and you can work without a PC. Homing, framing, start and pause we select with S1 button on motherboard. If you want to connect Lightburn via USB cable, we need to close NAJ app and select close and switch to GRBL mode. Open Lightburn and follow the manual on the NAJ wiki. With just a few clicks we make profile and connect to Lightburn. It connect instantly and that's the first time everything work like it should. No need to invert a single axis or homing. It simply works like it should. It definitely saves beginners a lot of time and troubles. On Google Store we can find a full map which also work great without issues. It's about time to put on the model and make some tests. Models simply slide on the clamp, tie both side screws and plug both red cables. But on what position we should mount the model? E80 got focal point of 25mm measured from housing. I just make some quick tests and 25mm seem the best choice. So first of all make sure the Z axis is in home point, that means all the way up. As I say I don't need to change anything into light burn, but you may need to enable Z axis into device settings. Z axis has 45mm stroke. So 45mm plus 25mm which is focal point means 70mm. So I mounted model on 70mm from panel to a model housing. On that position z-axis will cover all thickness of material from 0 to 45mm. When we got model fixed on right position setup is really simple. Just take away thickness of material from 45mm. For example I want to cut or engrave this piece of wood which is 11mm thick. So 45 minus 11 is 34 mm. In the NAJ app go to task options and set move z axis to minus 34 mm. Number should be negative. In the light burning cutter and grave layer options write that number into z offset without minus here. So if I manually move z axis for 34 mm there should be focal point on top of workpiece. Someone uses focal point a bit under the surface but I got best result when set it on surface. 
When we click Start, laser will move lower down the model to set its position and start burning. Into Light Burn there is another great function, it's Z Step Per Pass. If we set that to 1mm, Z axis will lower down the model for 1mm each pass. But be careful if you set 1mm and 10 passes, laser will go down for 10mm during work. And out of my tries I think 0.1 to 0.3mm work the best. More passes, lower number. So far the laser is still without air assist, so I tried to make some cut. And I was impressed that the laser almost perfectly cut 11mm spruce wood in just 5 passes. And actually got really nice not to burn edges. And then tried to make some engraves. It worked quite good, even in grayscale mode on MDF. But the laser is too powerful to engrave on soft wood, because it only burns wood in deep and not make surface black. But make nice deep engraves. It make nice engraves on anodized aluminium, on tiles, and it has enough power to engrave raw inox. Engrave is nicely black and it actually burned into inox, so engrave is a bit lower than surface. After a few tests I can say that the E80 is great to engrave tough material, like MDF, inox, anodized aluminium, tiles, stones and so on. But it's too powerful to engrave soft wood, especially for grayscale, where the 25 watt laser model is way the best. Now let's try the add-on, which not come with the machine, but need to buy separately. Firstly I try the emergency button. Just plug the button on door connector and it work. Into an AJ app and light burn without change any settings. Machine will instantly stop when the button is pressed. When the button is released we can continue engraving. And then the air assist valve. There are two different valves, 12 volts and 24 volts. If we use E80 model we have 24 volts power supply, so we need 24 volts valve. For all other models we need 12 volts power supply and 12 volts valve. I only have 12 volts valve, so I just put a small DC DC converter between, which lower down the voltage from 24 to 12 volts. It's a simple solution which works just fine. Now mount the valve on machine and plug the tubes. On input we plug the air compressor, on output we plug the tube which go to a laser. Cable from valve plug to M7 connector. The valve is mounted and connected. Now I need to mount the nozzle on model. Firstly I try with air assist nozzle. So I need to unscrew protective nozzle and screw in the air assist nozzle, which have no protective glass but only had a small hole for compressed air. From the side of a model replace the black screw with 90 degree tube coupling and we are ready to go. Before start we need to set up software. In the Neja app go into settings menu where we can turn the valve on or off, which is useful for testing of air assist. Or select auto mode so it will automatically turn the valve on or on start and turn off when the job will be done, or later if we set the layoff. In the light burn you may need to type M7 into device settings G code tab and then just enable air assist into layer options. E80 laser model is now equipped with air assist nozzle so let's try to make some cuts. I start with 3mm soft plywood which is cut in a single pass with 15mm per second speed. 5mm plywood cut perfect with 15mm per second speed in 2 passes. MDF 15mm per second 3 passes. I already showed that the 80 with its power can cut 11mm spruce wood without air assist in just 5 passes. But with air assist it can cut same piece in only 2 passes with 5mm per second speed. 20mm spruce wood 5mm per second in 5 passes. Then I reach the limit when I try to cut 20mm hard oak wood or chipboard which contain a lot of glue and trash and could not be cut. When I try with different settings I notice that the laser loses its power, so I check the lenses and notice big issue. I use basic oil air compressor which isn't supposed to use with air assist nozzle, because compressed air contains some oil and water which make lens dirty, so we need to use dry type of compressor for this nozzle. But luckily E80 model has another protective lens inside of model so dirt won't reach the core lenses which can damage the model. So I just take the lens out and clean them with photo lens swipes, so it become like new again. Then assemble the model back together, but this time with air assist tube, so dirty air won't go through the laser head. In this case we need to use protective nozzle which had another protective lens on its end. Air assist tube has great mounting system which holds the tube solid in its position and allows some height correction. 
but the tube comes straight, so we need to bend it in position that it will blow direct into cutting line. Basically, I got a better result with air assist tube, because it blow with more pressure direct into cutting line, and clean deep dust more efficient. But on other side, air assist nozzle make cleaner cuts, because it blow air evenly around the laser beam. So if you don't want to cut 20mm or thicker materials, and you had dry compressor, air assist nozzle is the way. Fine settings of tube is very important to get right result. It'd be perfect to have two tubes, one which follow the line by x-axis, and other to clean the line by y-axis. I try to make a few more cuts on hardwood and chipboard with tube air assist, but then I come to another issue. I may have too high pressure, which was about 50 to 70 psi for higher effect, but then all the dirt from chipboard attached on protective lens, which reduced the laser power a lot. I was thinking that the lens was destroyed, because cleaning doesn't help. By the way, an Aegis Hell demo is a spare part, and it's not so expensive. But then I try to polish it and it worked like magic, so I can continue cutting with full power. So I try to cut 25mm spruce wood, which cut nicely in 7 passes. Then switch to nozzle air assist and it also cut through, but in 9 passes. And also cut that piece was less burnt when cut it with air assist tube. So I switch back to tube and try to make some bigger cut. I said I think 8 or 9 passes, so it surely cut through 25mm spruce wood. When I came back, workshop was full of smoke, so enclosure and ventilation is a must for hardcore cutting like this. Honestly, I didn't expect, but it cut all the way through 25mm, all the way around. Basically, at least some spots stay uncut, but not this time. We can also see that the edges is really nice and amazingly perpendicular. It's a bit burnt on the bottom half, but cut is still amazing for such a thickness. Ok, let's try now the limitation with 30mm spruce wood. Firstly try with air assist nozzle. I set 100% laser power, 5mm per second speed, but also in 15 passes it come through only by 2 sides, other two still hold more than 2mm. Then I try with air assist tube, which need to be super precisely set, otherwise effect will be worse than using air assist nozzle. I said 10 passes for sure, but here we can see that in just 6 passes it already cut through by x-axis line. That means that there's still place to improve air assist. After a few more passes it cut through all the way. And it's amazing how nice pieces come out. Just look at that surface. They are barely burnt and the cut is almost completely strained and perpendicular. All the lasers I tried so far had 2 issue cutting thick material. When they cut too deep they start burning instead of cutting, so the piece was very burnt and useless. And the other issue was that the cut wasn't perpendicular, because laser follow the wood lines. If I tried to cut round on top, I got cut at the lips on the bottom and the part was unable to get out. But it doesn't happen with E80 model. Then I tried to cut one more time tough oak wood, but the wood is just too tough to cut more than 10 to 15 mm, then start burning instead of cutting. And same story with the chipboard, maximum cut is about 10 mm. 50 mm ash wood cut through, but makes some burning on bottom half. Many time asking me if those lasers can cut laminate floor, since it's quite cheap material. So far no laser I try couldn't cut through, but the E80 cuts through 8 mm laminate floor. There was a lot of burnt edges, but this material is high density, so it's quite tough to cut. Quite same as this 3mm tough MDF, which contain a lot of trash, and couldn't be cut before, but E80 has amazing power and do the job. Lexiglass, just unable to cut with those lasers, and I don't have acrylic material to try. But it's also the first model which nicely cut through 3mm reinforced rubber. What can I say, the E80 model is really amazing, and definitely the best model I try. It has dual option of air assist, great cooling, so the big fan run really quiet, and of course amazing power, so we can comfortably cut 5mm plywood and other materials, as we see, up to 30mm. The power of E80 is also amazing for engraving hard materials like tiles and inox. I know the video become way too long, but I got one more thing to try. It's a pen holder which come with the machine and convert our laser engraver in AJ4 into plotter machine. It's a simple add-on which clamp into machine instead of laser model. It has drawing pen into and a spring which push the pen on paper with evenly force which can be set it. Before I try I notice an issue that the pen stay too high even if I fully lower the z-axis. So I simply put a piece of wood under the paper or could make another adapter with a 3D printer or something. But I noticed Neji already solved the issue with new longer holder. 
for drawing I use Lightburn. There's nothing special to set up except the Z offset which need to be set at so the pen just touch the paper and maybe half of millimeter more so the spring is tense. I expect much more than I got from first test, but I quickly found that the issue is in pen which is too thin for the hole into holder, so the pen freely changed its position. I tried to use better branded pen which fit perfect into holder without clearance. Result is now much better, but as you see there is a lot of dead time just to lift and lower the Z axis. I couldn't find settings into light burn, so I simply lower down the pen to about 1mm from the paper, then in my case set caliper to 37mm. Put it under a Z axis limit switch and click home, so the machine thinks the Z axis is home on that position. Then set Z offset to 3mm and that's it. For that drawing it need 4 minutes and 52 seconds, and after that hack it make it in 2 minutes and 41 seconds with same drawing speed. Also quality of drawing is quite good, but still got some issue with the marker which not work here and there. I also tried with other markers, but there was no spring so paper need to be perfect parallel with machine. This option of machine is quite useful, maybe also for drawing PCB with special marker to make PCBs on old way with chemicals. There are also cutting knife for stickers, which work on same way, but don't have them yet, so maybe in some other video. For the end I tried to use NG4 Max with other laser models. Machine is compatible with every single model, we just need to do one important thing. Choose right power supply. For the E80 model we use 24 volts power supply, and for every other models use 12 volts power supply. And that's it. The frame of NG4 Max is really strong and rigid, so I tried to make some measurements, and also the numbers said it has great accuracy, also at maximal speed. There is not much to maintain, just be sure to regularly clean the lens and here and there clean the wheels and rails, but be careful on fingers, those rails really has a sharp edge. I had some issues there, those edges want to cut the side of belts. But after some fine tuning it seems issue always disappear. And don't forget to clean and grease the linear carriages. To do that simply unscrew entire Z axis from carriage so you can move it freely. Then wipe the rail and apply a bit of new grease through the middle hole on carriage. Run them a few times on the rail and wipe excess grease from the rails. Then repeat that on Z axis but don't apply too much grease, and some of it apply also on Z axis street. That's about it for today. Way too much I know, and what can I say for the end about this amazing machine? First of all I'm really impressed by the Neji E80 model, it's simply a beast, which makes some amazing cuts and actually deep engraved raw inox. Also Neji 4 Max itself is a great machine, it has many improvements from previous models, like stronger frame, better motherboard with more functions, linear rails and of course biggest upgrade, motorized Z-axis, which bring Neji 4 Max to another level. You may think there's no need to motorize the axis, but it improves laser cutting capacity a lot, plus we can use NG4 Max as a plotter or a sticker cutter. I only can find pros about that machine, but there's also some cons I find, like honeycomb doesn't fit, pen holder is too short to reach the button surface, and of course I really miss the cable chains. But in fact I'm making this video way too much time, so meanwhile Neji fix all that issue. By make Honeycomb 1cm smaller so it fit on Neji 3 or 4, they make longer pen holder and they also equip Neji 4 Max with X and Y cable chains for same price. Price of that machine is depend on discount, Neji always has something to offer. For exact price and more info check below into video description for the link to Neji store and Neji wiki. And that's about it. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like and see you next time.